Good morning, it's Monday, so we have a couple of book talks for you. Um, I actually managed to complete four books this weekend, um, two of which I'd been reading for quite a long time, so it wasn't like I just rocketed through them over the weekend, but, you know, anyway, four, it's a lot. One was an audiobook that I completed at the beginning of last week called Princesses Behaving Badly, Real Stories from History by um, Linda Rodriguez McRobbie is her name. And these were little snippets of stories about various women throughout history, um, mo mostly princesses, royalty, um, from various different countries, various different historical periods. And what was nice is, and the point of the book is to kind of show that, you know, we have an idea that everybody in the past was somehow better, more virtuous, um, just generally morals were, were were more common, like people just did the right thing all the time in the past, and they totally did not, because that's just not reality. Um, humans have been humans forever, and we've made mistakes, and we've done things other people didn't like. Um, and the book is kind of organized into different um, categories of people, uh, warrior women, um, gender nonconforming women, um, women that like to party, stuff like that. Um, but it was really very interesting. I may buy it in print for the library. I think I've got it on my list, but we're not ordering any more books for this year because we're kind of out of money, but um, I'll have it on the list for the fall and we'll probably get it in then. But it's very entertaining um, and informative. Another book that I finished, I just finished this one this morning, um, and I was reading it through the Serial Reader app. That's S-E-R-I-A-L, Serial, as in in a series. Um, the Serial Reader app, what you do is you subscribe to a particular classic book, and every night, or I, mine is it comes at night, but every day at a certain time, you get an issue that will show up on your phone, and you can spend, like, they'll tell you how much time it thinks you will need to spend reading it, usually anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes, um, but it takes a classic novel and breaks it up into chunks, so that way it's a little bit more manageable. Um, I had tried to read, this is the third time that I tried to read Crime and Punishment. Um, the first two times I was unsuccessful. Um, once I tried to read it on audio, once I tried to read it in print, and I just kind of trailed off kind of about a third of the way through. Um, but using Serial Reader, I was able to complete it, finally. It took me quite a long time. I think there were 79 issues or something, so it took me that many days to finish this book. Um, but I, I did enjoy it. It was slow in the middle. Um, if, you, if you don't know anything about Crime and Punishment, it's about a man who murders a pawnbroker. Um, he's, he's in kind of a bad financial situation, and he decides what he's going to do is he's going to kill this um, lady pawnbroker and steal her money, steal some things, sell them um, to get himself out of this debt. And while after he kills her, this other lady comes in, he kills her too. Okay. And then he takes the stuff from her, he kind of just haphazardly steals some things, and then he goes and hides them. And then the rest of the book, he's kind of like trying to decide, should he confess? Do people know? Um, some other people come forward and, and claim to have committed this crime. Um, other people are accused of it. But also through the story, you hear a lot of stuff about his mother, his sister, a couple of other characters, and that's kind of where I got a little lost. I'm like, I don't really care about any of these other people. Um, what's going to happen to the guy that killed the lady? Um, and, and I wasn't really super pleased with the way the book ended. Um, but if you like, if, you, if, if reading classic novels is something that you want to try to accomplish, just so you can say you did it, like sometimes I do, um, then, then I would recommend it. But Serial so Reader, definitely. I'm going to read Jane Eyre next because I've never read that and everybody talks about it all the time. So anyway, I read that. Um, I also have been reading this forever with my son. We read a chapter a night. Sometimes we don't always get to read a chapter, but I've been reading this for quite a while. Albrecht's Tomb. It's the third book in the Adventurers Wanted series, and that is from, from our library here. We have three of them. Seems like there's probably going to be more than three, but I'm done here. Um, if Sam wants to read any more of them, I'm just going to encourage him to read them himself. It's not that they're bad, it's just they have, it's really kind of difficult to read aloud this particular story. For example, there are two characters in this story. There are dwarves. One is named Thrang, and the other one is named Thrain. 
So trying to read this aloud when maybe Thrang and Thrain are in the same paragraph, it's kind of sounds like, did you say Thrain? Did you say Thrang? Like, I'm trying to enunciate as hard as I can, um, but it is kind of a little frustrating. But the story itself, it's a nice, pretty, straightforward adventure story. There are dragons, there are wizards, there are dwarves, there are elves, there are magical creatures that you fight, you know, or the main characters fight. There's a lot of talk about honor and and quests and legends and prophecies and oracles and stuff. So if you like that sort of thing, there's no romance in it at all. It's just straightforward dudes adventuring. There's a female character in this particular um, issue or uh, volume of this story, but eh, it, it, it's okay. So if you like that sort of thing, check it out. And lastly, I finished March book two. Um, I talked about March book one. Um, there is another book three that's going to conclude this trilogy. It is a graphic novel. Um, it talks about John Lewis, Congressman John Lewis, and his experiences participating in the Civil Rights Movement. A lot of this is set in Tennessee, in Nashville. Um, in this book, it talks more, the first book talked more about his life growing up and getting it started involved in the, in the movement. This book is more about um, leading up to the March on Washington, um, talks a lot about uh, lunch counter sit-ins, freedom rides, um, bombings and attacks on people and various different things. And one of the things that uh, really hit home for me in this book is people that were involved in the civil rights movement really were risking their lives. Okay? There really was great possibility that they could die, um, be murdered, be killed by police, by vigilantes, by um, the KKK, by various different people who did not agree with them because they wanted to be treated equally, they wanted the same opportunities, um, the same ability to walk into a place and, and get served um, and be treated like human beings, okay? So, but like I said, it's a very interesting, compelling story. Um, I definitely would recommend it to anybody that's interested in uh, past or current civil rights movement. So, check it out. And that's all I've got for you today, and we'll see you on Thursday with some sort of tip. If you have a suggestion, just let us know. Remember, if you want to do a guest book talk, whether you're a student or a teacher or an alumni, then just let us know, and we'll be happy to come and have you be recorded talking about a book that you love or hate or just recently read. So, anyway, have a nice day.